Today we're going to cover a solution, it's just part of a solution that we did for our client. The challenge we're facing is they have a Sage uh, 50 accounting database, which is 32-bit, and it's connected to an access database via ODBC, so also 32-bit, um, but Power Automate is 64-bit, and we needed to query product information that pulled from stuff that's in the access database and also linked to the Sage 50 data and Power Automate couldn't do that, it couldn't connect to the 32-bit uh, data source. And so what we used was an Excel macro, VBA, to ultimately query the database, return it to the Excel file, and then pull it from Excel. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because Power Automate, even though it can't connect to 32-bit data sources, can still connect to 32-bit Office. So it can run Excel, do all the Excel commands, and launch an Excel macro. So let's take a quick look at that, and um, if that's something that you find interesting, or it's helpful to you, or maybe opens up some opportunities, you know, like the video, share it, let people know about it. But this is just a, like I say, it's part of a much bigger solution, one where we actually build uh, JSON to transfer product information up to um, their e-commerce site uh, via an API. And we're gonna get to that solution later this week. So let's take a look at this. What we have here is an Excel file. This is where the data is gonna come into. And I have an access database. This is just simulating my client's Sage 50 database. I changed the product's name, product names and I can't really show you their Sage 50 data. Uh, it's kind of proprietary, all that fun stuff. But I wanna show you the solution. So we have a query in access that's gonna have the product information that we need to pull into ultimately Power Automate. So here's how that's going to work. I'll close the Access Database. And we have a macro here called Retrieve Products. I'm gonna run it here first just so you see what it does. There you go, it pulled the data pretty fast from the database, not a lot of data here. We're really pulling a few hundred records um, in our use case and it's still very fast. So I'll get rid of that and save the file. We'll close the Excel file. I almost forgot to show you this is the uh, this is the VBA that um, calls the access database, and it queries the database and returns the data. So just make an ADO connection, um, which I ultimately establish as the uh, connection to the um, to the access file, and then what I do is I grab the sheet, the products to create, I find the last row, if there's any data on there, I wanna remove it. And then if the last row is greater than one, because if the last row is the first row, I don't wanna delete recursively back into the header. Um, so if the last row is greater than one, it deletes all the data on the sheet, it runs this simple query, and then um, takes that data, creates the record set, and uses the copy from record set, and places the data on the spreadsheet. So that's how that works. And then let's look at our flow. Here's our flow. I set a path. That's just because I use that path later in the larger solution. And that way I can just change it for my environment and just change one variable so it looks in the proper place for the data files it needs. But in any case, um, so what it does is it launches Excel uh, and then it runs that Excel macro, retrieve products. And then I go to that sheet and I grab the data, all the data into, um, I send it as the active worksheet, I read the data, and then we can just process that data. So I'm gonna show this in very simplest fashion so you can see you know, what's going on there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a breakpoint right there on run the Excel macro, and then let's run this flow. So we launch Excel, with that sheet, if we were to bring up the Excel file, which came up down here, here it is. This is the sheet in question. Let me uh, minimize that again, go back to our flow. Now we're gonna run the Excel macro. So we're just gonna run the next action. It's now run that, and there's our data. So now we'll set that in our Excel instance as the active sheet. We'll read the data into product data. Now we can go right here and we can take a look at the product data and voila, we have it available to us. And really that's all we need. Now we can do all the regular things we're gonna to do to create the JSON that we're gonna to send to our, um, to the, uh, 
uh, e-commerce website for my client. But I'm just going to let it iterate through a few times. You can see I'm just grabbing the third column, so we'll run the next action. And we're going to have product is now equal to couch leather. There's four rows that have the same product, so I know that I have to run this a few times. And then we should see it change. And there it is. Now it's a reclining chair. And so it's iterating through our data set appropriately, and then we can take whatever other actions we need to take, call the API, build the JSON we need, all that fun stuff. So I'll show you that solution next week, but that's kind of how you can use um, Excel to do some things when you cannot uh, query a 32-bit data source. And there are other places where it makes sense to do that because you can do a lot with VBA or you may have existing code that does a lot of things for you. And it can be a little easier to work with if you work with code for any period of time than using something like Power Automate, but it certainly expands the capabilities of Power Automate. If you have any questions on how that was done, put a, a question in the comment, or you can send me an email, it'll be on the screen. And like the video, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks so much for tuning in, see ya.